Welcome to this video tutorial. I'm going to be sharing with you an outstanding answer for research methods from the summer series in 2017, paper two, AS. Now I know a lot of you will not be sitting the AS paper and will not be answering a 16 mark question on the research methods. However, the skills and application on a question like this will transfer to the full A level. The only difference is that you'll have an item to use and an extra four marks to gain on that full A level paper. So here is a question from summer paper two AS from 2017, and it was asking, evaluate the importance of theoretical factors when choosing sociological research methods. For your information, I've included the top part of the mark scheme. And also here is the indicative content to give you some idea about what the examiners were expecting to see in answers to this question. Remember, some of these will be included as evaluation points. So let's explore the answer that got 16 out of 16 and was shared so you can see what an outstanding answer looks like. It will also include the examiner comments. So let's start off with the first paragraph. When choosing a sociological research method, an individual's theoretical background is likely to influence what method is used based on what they want to learn from the research. Clearly links to the question that is being asked. A positivist is more likely to use research methods such as the experiments, whereas an interpretivist is more likely to use research methods such as observations. And what this introduction does sets up the debate in a lovely way. Um, really nice early knowledge of the theoretical background of positivist and interpretivist, including a lovely cheeky link to research methods such as experiments and observations. Paragraph two starts with a clear opening sentence that addresses the question set. One theoretical factor that may affect a sociological, uh, uh, sociologist's choice in research methods is whether they want the research to be scientific or non-scientific. And what the student then does is links it to concepts such as quantitative and qualitative. And they explain why sociologists want to use those different um, type of data in order to choose the research methods that they do. And they go into this analytical point where they compare positivists with interpretivists. So positivists want the research methods to be scientific, producing quantitative data so they can make comparisons. And they show that they really understand what the merit is of using quantitative data. Then we've got this analysis point where they are comparing to interpretivist because they're using this argument that people can't be studied in a scientific way. So this is logically following on this scientific point from the positivist and they will choose a research method that is non-scientific. They continue to elaborate, going into a little bit more detail, that they want their research methods to produce qualitative data which will allow them to learn the meanings behind the behaviour. Continuing with, with the more theoretical um, arguments, they continue to argue um, using some concepts which are associated with positivist and interpretivist, such as reliability, validity. And they use that in a very similar analytical way, firstly talking about positivist and then comparing it to the interpretivist. So for example, um, whether it should be reliable or repeatable or valid or truthful. They, uh, they explain it by suggesting a positivist would want their research to be reliable, as this means that it can be repeated multiple times and similar results will be shown. So they show that they understand what is meant by reliability. Then we start to see the analysis again, where they are comparing it with interpretivists, because they want it to be more um, valid as this that this would mean that it is more representative of real life or reflects real life and furthermore the researchers can gain first to hen and this is a term that is used by um, Weber to show empathy they continue with the um, the theoretical points by continuing to use terms such as objectivity and subjectivity because that will also affect the choice of research method. A positivist is more likely to use a research method that is objective so the person who is carrying out the research isn't able to add their own opinion and potentially bias the results. However, interpretivists would argue that it's important that the research is subjective because then it allows the researcher to fully interpret and understand why something is happening. So in summary, that whole paragraph 
um, really links to what the question is asking. Just to remind you, the question wants to know, the, the evaluate the importance of theoretical factors in choosing sociological uh, research. And this student breaks it down. They address each debate in turn. So starting off with the methods that they would use, whether it's scientific or not scientific. Then they talk about the quantitative and qualitative. Then they talk about the validity and the reliability. And then they have the objectivity and subjectivity. And breaking it down and explaining each in turn, um, showing that anal analysis by comparing positivist and interpretivist. Now, this student does not stop there. Because then we start to see the um, evaluation where they are starting to bring in other factors which could be as equally important as well as the theoretical factors. So this student then continues with the ethical factors. These are more important than theoretical, so they are linking it to the question. They're not just bolting it on, um, so uh, it's not in a juxtaposition type of way. I do have a video on that. When choosing a research method, if the research method is ethically strong through having confidential confidentiality, right to withdraw informed consent, privacy and protection from harm, then the researcher might be more likely to choose that method. It is also said that some researchers choose a research method if it lacks one of these ethical factors as it will benefit the research. For example, if a participant isn't given informed consent, the Hawthorne effect may not occur. For example, they apply um, Venkatesh, who was an observation. Um, so, for example, was unable to gain access to the gang he wanted to study through participant observation, he would need to choose another research method that would allow him to carry out his research. So, nice little use of a bit of um, research there as a comparison to suggest that a practical factor is more important than a theoretical factor. Finally, the student then um, includes a conclusion. Conclusions are really important because it ties the answer together and in all of the essay questions, um, if you want to be getting in top band, you have got to be tying it all back together in some sort of conclusion and making some sort, sort of remark. And this student clearly links back to the question in this part. Although ethical and practical factors do carry some importance of what research methods is chosen, theoretical factors um, link the most with different research methods and are thus the most important and basically what this student is doing is making a judgment. So overall the examiner commentary that has come from the, um, the exam board is that par paragraph one sets up the essay like I said nice clear introduction outlines the positivist versus interpretivist debate Paragraph two has got um, a lot of um, AO3 in there because they clearly compare the knowledge of positivist and interpretivist um, use of all the relevant concepts, which I would expect to see if you were talking about theoretical issues such as um, reliability, validity, quantitative, qualitative, objectivity, uh, subjectivity. Paragraph three addresses the ethical issues. Paragraph four, the practical issues in comparison to the theoretical theoretical um, nature of the essay and then it comes to a distinct conclusion. Uh, overall it was very conceptually and evaluative, it clearly addressed the question throughout and it good understanding of the theoretical issues. Um, according to the exam board um, this is what a notational 17 year old under exam conditions were was able to write within 20 to 25 minutes and therefore achieved 16 out of 16. In answer to this question, the examiner comments, um, this question attracted a wide range of responses. Better answers tended to explore the issues of validity, reliability, representativeness and generalizability. However, a significant number appeared uncertain about what some of these co key concepts meant. Please make sure that you understand what is meant by validity and reliability. There was also some students who had little understanding of what the theoretical factors were and cited practical and ethical issues in their place. Some students gave long accounts of examples of research and their methods without really getting to grips with what the question was asking. But the best answers, like what you have seen on this video, were able to explain the link between positivist and interpretivist approaches and their choice of method. Key theoretical terms were explained and analysed. And the very best answers were able to come to a conclusion about the relative importance of theoretical factors. So as always, massive thank you for watching. If you have got any questions, please place them in the comments below. 
Um, if you like the video, please click like, click the bell. Uh, I do videos weekly. So if you've got any questions, please make sure that you comment. Um, you can also send me an email. That is down there also. Okay. Thank you and have a great week.